Now, Bill de Blasio won on a campaign saying that they are going to uh, rail in, um, reel in, I should say, um, and rail against uh, stop and frisk. And he did. And it worked. He won overwhelmingly in numbers I haven't seen in my lifetime in terms of margin of victory. So the people of New York are definitely ready to go on a new path. That's why they've brought now a new commissioner and Ray Kelly's out. That's exactly what we wanted. And they brought in Bill Bratton, who was the former NYPD commissioner under Rudy Giuliani when it was Giuliani time and uh, who says the stop and frisk was applied wrong but in principle might not be so bad. Oh boy. Now hold, hold. Now that sounds really bad, right? And you don't know because unfortunately sometimes these guys run on one platform as soon as they come in they feel like they gotta prove to the press or the opposing party or the power establishment that they're not that dangerous. You don't have to prove anything. You just won with over, I think it was a 50 point differential in the vote. What you should prove is your point of view. Now, having said that, we don't know which direction Bill de Blasio is going, because before you cast judgment on this, you gotta know the full record of Bill Bratton. Now, uh, of course, Bill de Blasio says, we will uh, do it, meaning bringing in new change, by rejecting the false choice between keeping New Yorkers safe and protecting their civil rights. Now, I totally agree with that. Like, we didn't, well, I, I wasn't a voter in New York, but all of you who voted in New York didn't vote for him because you thought, oh, let the criminals run amok. No, of course not. You want to be safe, you want to be protected, but you don't want to abuse civil rights while you're doing it. We elected him to strike that balance. Now, for his part, um, Bill Bratton says, uh, Mayor-elect de Blasio's priorities are my priorities. So, okay, that sounds good. And he said the NYPD is the best police force uh, in the country. Now, he was the head of the Boston Police Force and the LAPD. So if I was in one of those police forces, I'd be like, oh, I quickly would forget. What happened? I thought we were the best. Anyway, that's an incredibly minor point. Overall, though, when you look at Bill Bratton's record, it's actually not that bad. Now, a lot of the civil liberties groups in Los Angeles, when he was the head of the LAPD, were actually quite happy with him. Uh, they thought that he communicated effectively with them and addressed their concerns. And the LAPD had a terrible history of uh, trampling on civil rights and dealing with the black community. But uh, under William Bratton, crime was down 54% uh, from 2001, and race relations seemed to be improving. In fact, 51% uh, of the residents said that the police in their communities treated members of all racial and ethnic groups fairly almost all the time or most of the time. Now, if crime decreased by 54% and a majority of the people in uh, underserved communities think that Br Bratton did a good job, now that's a balancing act. That's exactly what you want. Now, it doesn't mean Bratton doesn't have flaws, okay? Uh, I interviewed him on The Young Turks with Cenk Uger, which was the current show, the television show that we had. And in the midst of that interview, he admitted that he worked with the CIA in doing surveillance in a way that I totally am opposed to. And I think Ray Kelly did that in New York, and I think that's a huge problem, and I hope he does not head in that direction in New York, but I'd be surprised if he didn't, okay? So don't get too hopeful that this guy is, you know, Mr. Civil Liberties. On the other hand, don't be too despondent, oh my God, Bill de Blasio screwed us. No, no, no. It might be that he struck a decent balance. And uh, Bill Bratton's career is a nuanced one, an interesting one, and one that might lead to good results in New York. And one last thing, people keep saying Bill Bratton was in favor of the broken windows theory in how to handle crime, and hence is in favor of stop and frisk. But those are two totally different things. Now he compared stop and frisk to chemotherapy that if done wrong could greatly damage the body, uh, but if done appropriately could help. Now how they apply stop and frisk, or if they should apply that principle at all, is a good question, right? And I, I'm not convinced that stop and frisk is the way to go in any circumstance. But Broken Windows said, was basically the short-term uh, way of saying, short-handed way of saying, hey, if you commit a minor violation, you know, you jump the turnstile, you break a window, et cetera, then we're gonna make sure we enforce that to the hilt, because those minor violations, when we enforce them, we usually find out that there are significant criminals behind that. See, that's a policy I like, because then you're actually targeting criminals. In Stop and Frisk, you're targeting blacks and Latinos for being blacks and Latinos. Do you know that in 2012 alone, 400,000 blacks and Latinos who were totally innocent were stopped and frisked? That's one year, 400,000 of them. What does that do to, the, uh, to their mentality? Every time they go to work, they go to school, they're stopped and they're frisked. And when they're totally innocent, 
That's what we need to stop. But if you've got to catch a guy doing something minor, and you want to look into his record and see if there's any outstanding warrants, that's just good police work. You work with the community to protect the community.